Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the swearing-in ceremony in honor of the Honorable Patrick J. Murphy as the Undersecretary of the Army. Our host for today's ceremony is the Honorable Eric K. Fanning. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem sung by Mr. Tim Kelly, followed by the invocation delivered by Chaplain Paul Hurley, Chief of Chaplains. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight were the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the home of the Let us pray. Almighty God, we turn to you in confidence and in your presence. You make us faithful as we serve our great military. We ask you now to continue to bless Mr. Murphy, his family, with focus and fortitude. Grant him the wisdom and foresight to help build an agile, adaptive army of the future. Place peace upon his soul that each and every day you will guide him. Keep his mind and heart on soldiers, civilians and their families. May this servant be the leader of our nation's needs, the husband, father and friend you have called him to be. In your holy name we pray, amen. amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Fanning. Full house, uh, thank you. Um, first, one more round of applause for that amazing rendition of the National Anthem. Uh, thank you all for joining us on this very important Army Day uh, where we get to swear in Patrick Murphy as our undersecretary, as your undersecretary. Uh, General Chief Secretary Shinseki and Patty, thank you for joining us. Congressman Rooney, thank you for being here. Um, Patrick, I am honored you would ask me to host. I'm also grateful. Hosting ceremonies is pretty much the only honest work I get these days. <laughs> so thank you. Um, nobody gets to a position like this, I've said it many times, without help. And based on the enormous number of family members here today, it's clear that Patrick, like me, needs lots of help. Uh, pretty much everyone on this side of the room is a Murphy or a Murphy relative. <laughs> In fact, there are enough Murphys here alone to build a baseball team, uh, which could surely beat your uh, famous Phillies. 
In fact, there's a half of a Millie right here, a Murphy right here. Uh, uh, the chief's mother is a Murphy, so we're surrounded by them. Um, I'm glad to see the Irish keeping their lead of the army, and I'm particularly glad to see some balance to the Boston clan. So thank you very much to the Philly clan. Uh, Patrick's wife, Jenny, is here. She's a recovered lawyer, and having just met her today, um, clearly the, uh, the, the power center in the family. So thanks for all that you do keep those trains running on time. Uh, children, Maggie and Jack, are here, just as they were for their father's confirmation hearing. Do you remember that? It's pretty boring, right? <laughs> I know you're proud of your dad, but if you're sitting at the table, you want it to be boring, so that was a successful hearing. <laughs> I'm told both of you whipped out your iPads to keep yourself busy, is that right? That's exactly what my mother did during my hearing. <laughs> Jack is a budding hockey standout himself, uh, like his father. In fact, his team, am I right, just won the gold medal league championship in Ocean City. <laughs> Maggie plays softball, is a math wizard, apparently likes dance, but what's your greatest love? I'm told it's the Army. What did you draw on your, uh, your driveway recently? The Army is awesome, so <laughs> there you go. Uh, thank you in advance to the three of you for all of the sacrifices and commitments you'll make while Patrick is in this job. Um, we know uh, none of us can do this alone, and uh, we appreciate uh, that you're a part of the family as well. His parents are here also from Pennsylvania. Um, Jack, a Navy veteran with 22 years on the Philadelphia Police Force, thank you for being here. And Marge, a former nun and legal secretary. Uh, this is how committed to the military this family is. Marge has two brothers who are both Army paratroopers, uh, and her twin brother served with the 101st Airborne Division in Vietnam. Brother JJ is here from New Mexico. JJ is a major in the Air Force Reserve. I'm not sure how that happens. Uh, I'll let you explain that to the chief later. Uh, he specializes in research or search and uh, rescue, and you are also, I understand, the city manager for Hobbs, New Mexico. So I hope we can give your brother some tips. His sister, Kathy Margolis, is here. I had originally written that his sister, Kathy Margolis, is here and realized that with the Catholic uh, influence, I may have gotten everyone confused. So Patrick's sister, Kathy Margolis, is here. <laughs> Kathy's a teacher in Colorado and is joined by her son, uh, Bryce. Um, Patrick. Patrick was, I'm told, the youngest and smallest of three kids. And because of this, he admitted to an early Napoleon complex <laughs> that led to frequent fisticuffs. But remember that his father was a police officer and his mother a former nun, so they kept him from straying too far. This is probably why he also earned early praise as an altar boy, even voted altar boy of the year in 1987. <laughs> Did you have that? <laughs> so I'm not sure how much it means. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger than confirmation. Bigger than, well, that's good. One of us has something to celebrate. Uh, these, these facts combined probably explain why he was the lead assistant scorer in his college hockey team. I realize his brother was the lead scorer uh, in points and the leader in penalties, as I understand it, in penalty minutes. I'm not sure which, is, which of these accomplishments better prepares you for your leadership role in the Army, though I'm sure we're all guessing it's the same one. Speaking of penalties, Patrick was once invited to the White House to play basketball with President Obama. He scored a three-pointer with the president while the president was guarding him. And I'm told he talked a little smack afterwards, telling the commander-in-chief that he'd take it easy on him from then on. <laughs> Apparently, he was wildly successful at this as he failed to score another point in the next four <laughs> games. It was during Patrick's time in college that he got the bug for public service. In 1996, he and his brother, JJ, led a student effort to fill and stack sandbags, sandbags in an attempt to hold off floodwaters threatening Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. The effort prompted a campus visit from then President Clinton who said, we need to find ways to multiply the spirit shown by Patrick Murphy. From there he became an army officer, which the chief will discuss in more detail, a lawyer, which we'll just let stand on its own, <laughs> and eventually the first Iraq war veteran elected to Congress. I first met Patrick six years ago next month. I wouldn't expect him to remember this, but I have photos to prove it, and I found them today. I was a newly minted Deputy Undersecretary of the Navy, and he was in Congress, leading the charge for the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. 
He was and is a personal hero of mine for taking on that fight and how he went about it. And it wasn't at all clear that the repeal would pass. Many of you may remember that the president was also trying to get the New START Treaty ratified. And most advisors and political pundits said he only had one bullet for those two priorities, not enough political capital to get them both accomplished. It took the incredible leadership of Patrick and a small group of others willing to lead this charge to ensure repeal. I don't know if Patrick found the president a second bullet or managed to get the two targets lined up one behind the other, but Patrick, there are more people than you know grateful for your courage. Thank you. Jack. <laughs> Patrick tells us that you taught him that you have to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. So you damn well better stand for something. It's clear Patrick has taken these words to heart. I don't think anyone doubts his positions or his convictions. I next met Patrick early last year. I was chief of staff to the Secretary of Defense, and he was talking to us at the direction of the president himself, which rarely happens, about possible appointments in the Defense Department. Neither of us knew that we would both end up in the Army for a glorious 48 hours of partnership <laughs> before I would return to the Secretary of Defense's office. Patrick, I sincerely hope we get to extend that streak soon. Let me close with a story from Patrick's time in Iraq. He is returning from a mission in 120 degree heat with an unhappy teenage trooper. The trooper looks at him and asks why he's smiling. Patrick answers, life is good. The teenager responds, this place sucks. Patrick replies, this place might suck, but you've got to embrace it, brother. Patrick, I can think of no better advice as you embark on your life in the Pentagon. <laughs> Welcome back to the Army, which I, I know you never actually left. Congratulations and good luck, my friend. Thank you, Mr. Fanning. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chief of Staff of the Army, General Mark A. Milley. Well, it's hard to beat that advice, I can tell you that, and you should take that to heart, <laughs> Secretary Murphy. Well, uh, for me, it's a special day because I've heard about Murphys, I've heard about cops, I've heard about nuns, and I've heard about hockey. Uh, so uh, the Secretary and I have an awful lot in common, and in fact, a little known secret is we're in fact cousins. Uh, so if you're a Murphy clan member of any Murphy clan, go ahead and stand up in this room. I just want to see how many we got. Uh, not bad, not bad, not bad. So that's the Philadelphia Murphys. There's about a million more north of you in Boston, just in case you're wondering uh, where the rest of your family is. So, so that's great. You know, Secretary McHugh, another great Irishman, he said, <clears throat> you know, when I became chief in his speech, he said, this is my fourth chief of staff. So I can say that I'm almost catching him because Secretary Murphy is my third Secretary of the Army in only six months. <laughs> and if Secretary Fanning gets confirmed, he'll be my fourth. So I will tie Secretary McHugh and give him a call and say, game's up. I tied. Massachusetts tied New York. So this is really a special day for all of us. Uh, you know, Secretary Murphy, I've gotten to know him uh, not only as a cousin and a brother and a hockey player and a, and a fellow Murphy, uh, but uh, I've got to know him over the last uh, several weeks, and of course, uh, this morning we were uh, bobbing and weaving there in front of the, one of the committees, and it was really interesting for me <clears throat> to see Secretary Murphy uh, for only the second time on the other side of that podium. Uh, and, it was, uh, and it was obviously that he handed, handled it with a great expertise, but there are some goods and bads of Patrick Murphy that I think are worthy of noting. Uh, first, uh, the fact on the bad side, you've got to cover the bad news first. So first, he's from Philadelphia. Uh, <laughs> That, that's, an, that's an issue. Uh, and he's a Flyers fan, which is ungood. Uh, the second big one, or third big one, actually, is he is a lawyer. And there's a lot of lawyers in this room right now. 
So I will reserve my comments about lawyers. I'm looking at the GC right now, so I'll hold fire on the lawyer piece. <clears throat> but the, the uh, fourth big one is he taught at West Point. <laughs> but on the plus side, on the plus side, where's that note? On the plus side. <laughs> so seriously, on the plus side, uh, Secretary Murphy's uh, a wonderful individual, but he is an American paratrooper. Uh, he was served uh, really well in the 82nd Airborne Division uh, from 2000 to 2004. So went to Bosnia and then, of course, to Iraq. And uh, now he's a lawyer in the 82nd, so he's always telling the commander why not to do something. But in fact, I'm sorry, did I say that? That was my inside voice. That's my inside voice. No, in fact, he didn't do that. He, he didn't do that. I actually talked to his commander. Uh, in fact, uh, what I was told from his commander, uh, that Patrick Murphy was one of the finest SJAs he's ever had, and he always found a way to say yes. And they're engaged in close combat with the enemy, uh, and there's some tough calls. And commanders, and having been a commander, always lean on your lawyer a lot, uh, and you're always looking to a lawyer to find ways in which to accomplish the mission and do so uh, legally within the bounds of law and rules of engagement, uh, but you still want to get after the enemy. Uh, Secretary Murphy was that kind of lawyer. Uh, and he did it day in and day out. And importantly, uh, in one of the cases, he actually acted as a prosecutor. And he prosecuted uh, uh, Sheikh Moaid, uh, who was uh, one of uh, Muqtadr al-Sadr's uh, principal lieutenants. Now, those names may not mean anything to you, but they mean a lot to me. Uh, because I've got uh, uh, plenty of time in Iraq as a commander, and I lost a lot of soldiers uh, in Iraq. And a lot of those soldiers were killed by that militia. And there's no doubt in my mind uh, that your efforts to put that guy to justice uh, really is looked down upon uh, by those above us right now uh, who gave their lives for their country. And they're grateful to your efforts for doing that. So thank you uh, for doing that. And thank you for being a great lawyer in the 82nd Airborne Division. Um, you know, for Army officers, uh, we teach from the time you're a second lieutenant all the way up uh, till you're a general and beyond, I guess. Uh, about the seas, the, the, the seas of leadership. And as I look at uh, Secretary Murphy, <clears throat> you know, the first C is competence. And what I see and I have seen day in and day out, many hours a day, is an exceptional level of competence. And I look forward to seeing uh, more of that uh, in the months and, and hopefully years ahead. Uh, the second one is commitment. I don't know that I've ever seen uh, very many uh, folks either in uniform or out of uniform as committed uh, to the United States Army and its success as Secretary Murphy. That comes through in spades every day in every meeting on every issue. He's got an incredible amount uh, of commitment. He's also got a huge amount of character uh, and character is a lot of different things but the one part of character that I look to the most is integrity. Uh, that, that portion of your character which means you're going to still stand tall uh, in the breach, that you've got a spine made of steel, and you're willing to tell truth to power no matter what the personal consequences. Uh, that level of courage is what I'm seeing in Secretary Murphy, and, and that is what we should all be proud of. And the last one uh, is compassion. Uh, here's a guy who, in my view, has enormous compassion. Uh, he's not in it for himself. He has compassion for others, and he's, he has compassion for the soldiers uh, that are in our army. Uh, he's got a compassion for the families that are in our army, and he's got compassion for the civilians that are in our army. Uh, so this is a secretary that we can all be proud of. This is a secretary who's got an enormous amount of talent and energy, uh, and this is a secretary that I personally am going to be very, very proud to serve alongside. So, so thank you, Secretary Murphy, for doing what you're going to do for the country and what you've already done. Thank you. Thank you, General Milley. Would the Murphy family please join Ms. Starzak in front of the flags? The Honorable Alyssa M. Starzak, General Counsel of the Army, will now administer the oath to Mr. Murphy thus formally swearing him in as the Undersecretary of the Army. Like 
I, state your name. I, Patrick Joseph Murphy. Having been appointed the Under Secretary of the Army. Having been appointed the Under Secretary of the Army. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I'll support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I'll bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. That I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office of which I'm about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. is being presented a presidential commission signed by President Barack Obama. Thank you, Ms. Starzak and the Murphy family. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Under Secretary of the Army, the Honorable Patrick J. Murphy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much uh, to, my, to my family and my friends, uh, to Murphy Nation. Um, <laughs> Uh, and the, the great Americans that I get to work with, these soldiers and civilians every day. Uh, Chief, thanks so much for your words. You are part of the family. You don't know, my mom is a Rapone. She's Italian, so the Italians wouldn't want to stand up with the Murphys, but there's like four rows. <laughs> it's, we're working on that. Um, she's a nut. I know, I, yeah, she's a nut, right. So, um, uh, Eric Fanning, thank you so much. Uh, that meant so words, to, your words were heartfelt, and I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, General Shinchecki and Patty, thank you so much for, for being here. Um, Patty, no, I, I, I've told you personally, no, but not to his face, that he's a, a hero of mine. Um, uh, the fact that uh, he's been such a great public servant and an inspiration for so many of us. Uh, the chief and I don't try to hold against him that he went to West Point. You know, we still love him for that. Uh, if you don't know, the chief is only the seventh uh, chief of staff of the Army to be an ROTC graduate. Uh, he went to the college that Maggie wants to go to, which is Princeton University, where he played hockey. Uh, but the first one was a Pennsylvanian, and that was George Marshall. So we're proud. But uh, General Shinchecki, thank you. General Shinchecki and his wife, by the way, have uh, grandkids named Maggie and Jack. So, um, <laughs> so we feel pretty connected to them. Um, Congressman Tom Rooney, you're my, my buddy uh, from the Army. Uh, you're a great American. Uh, we won't tell your constituents in Florida that you, used to, you were born and raised and where you were raised in Northeast Philadelphia. Um, I'm sure that if, well, I might have ruined that for you. This is on TV. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Tom and I served, uh, and his wife Tower served together, and he was a great uh, soldier for uh, the first team, first cavalry division at Fort Hood, and then we taught together at West Point. Uh, and we were, um, uh, well, he's my wedding, but we also uh, served in Congress together. Uh, he's just a great American, so thanks, Tom, for being here. And also to Mike and Sabrina Curie, Congressman Curie uh, has been a great friend. He loves the fact that my mom's Italian, by the way. Um, but Mike, thanks so much. I was just talking about you today, in fact, uh, with somebody. Uh, Alyssa Starzak's parents were not your constituents, but she's from Besser, right? Vessel. Vessel, Vessel, and his mom, uh, yep, so they, they loved you. <laughs> Um, cause I, I double tracked to make sure that they were good first before I said I knew you. Um, <laughs> but no, seriously, thank you for, for being here. 
uh, to Tom Hawley, my colleague, and, and to, to everyone I know, uh, former Undersecretary is here, Undersecretary Reeder and Ford, thank you all so much and for, for being here. It means a lot. Uh, the former uh, Secretary Jack Tamarcio, former 82nd Airborne Division, uh, he's a great American, uh, and to all of you, and I, and I promise I keep it short and sweet. I just wanted to say uh, thank you for being here today. This is such an awesome, awesome honor to, to be back with the Army family. Uh, I joined at, at age 19 when I was a student at King's College with Todd Schweitzer, who's somewhere, should, him and his wife Carol should be here. Todd and I, Todd, there you go, he's still shy. Um, uh, at that point, Todd and I lived above a bar, so it was a shock that we actually made it through ROTC, but, uh, but uh, Todd and I uh, served together. Of course, he told everyone he was going to do 20 years, and I said, I'm going to do, you know, I had four years, I stayed a lot longer, but um, I, we were buddies uh, way back at King's College in Pennsylvania, and I know a lot of the folks are there, including a lot of hockey players, Eric, that you mentioned, uh, that I had to defend all the time because I did lead the team in penalties and points because my brother is smaller than me, even though he's bigger, and I had to defend him. Um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, let, me let, me, let me talk about my family real quick because they're so important to me. Uh, my mom and dad uh, are here and they've been a role models for my brother, sister, and I. And they really did uh, stamp on our hearts a love for our country and what it is to have a servant's heart. Uh, my dad did that in the Navy and, and obviously as a fellow police officer uh, in our community, uh, coaching our teams and being active. And my mom uh, will always be disappointed in me because I'm not a, a priest. Um, <laughs> but uh, I did make it to be altar, altar boy of the year and I think Father Foley is going to be here to do the benediction. Uh, he's gone astray. He, he's now in the Navy. He couldn't get in the Army as a chaplain, but he's not going to be. He's, he'll do the benediction, uh, the commander. But um, to my family for being here, thank you so much. And my sister Kathy, who's uh, a school teacher, so that service of our community, and my brother JJ. Uh, and we obviously go through the ranks for a long time. Um, and obviously, to Maggie and Jack, you guys look awesome. Uh, your mommy looks so beautiful, and uh, we're, we're, we're a team. And for you guys coming down, driving down to be here, it really means the world to me, so thank you. <laughs> um, I wanted to say one, one last thing. You know, we are a defining, we're in a, right now in a defining moment in our country's history. We're almost 15 years in war in Iraq and Afghanistan, and we've asked less than 1% of America to serve. It's been 2.6 million Americans that served in Iraq or Afghanistan of the 330 million Americans. So to come back here uh, and be part of the leadership team in the Army uh, and the military is, is a pretty incredible responsibility. Um, and you look at what's going on right now, obviously, with ISIS in Iraq and Syria and now Libya and what they're doing here at home in San Bernardino and, and in Philadelphia against a police officer a couple weeks ago. Um, and we are asking so much of our soldiers and our civilians and their families. And it's just so, so grateful to be back on, on the Army team to help serve them and to do what I can to fight for them because they are doing so much for all of us. And I will say, you know, when you look at the Army itself, if you don't know, 1.4 million people in the Army, about a million soldiers, 400 civilians, and it would really, if, you, if it was a public company in the Fortune 500, it would be a Fortune 10 company, $140 billion budget. Uh, but what they do every day in our communities, we are right now 190,000 troops in 140 countries doing what they can to keep our families safe at your home. Um, that's, they're doing pretty great things. And to stand here uh, as Undersecretary of the Army, uh, it's something I never thought of when, when Todd and I joined back at King's College. Uh, but it is, it is an honor, and I hope I make all of you proud of that service. Uh, Timmy Kelly, I saved you for last, buddy, because Timmy Kelly sings for the Philadelphia Eagles, if you don't know, Chief. Um, <laughs> Timmy, Timmy Kelly is eight and two when the Eagles, when he sings the national anthem, the Eagles are eight and two. Uh, when we beat the Patriots last year, you're, the, hey, hey, hey. we beat the Patriots last year. Hey. But he didn't sing it that one because it was in your home team. We came to you up there and kicked it. We beat you. Um, 
So, uh, <laughs> but it is just it is just great to be here. And you know, one of the priorities that we're trying to do in the Army is to make sure that we're connected to those who were once within our ranks. And that's why we're doubling down on the Soldier for Life program. Um, I will tell you, uh, we have one million soldiers right now, but there's 9.5 million. The majority of American veterans are Army veterans, and I connect with them, and it makes good business sense because for the last five years in the Department of Defense, we spent $4.6 billion to pay unemployment. So to make sure they have a proper transition, to make sure we're doing all we can, to make sure we can highlight the great things they do in this community. Uh, I know I couldn't be more proud, and I've always been proud to be an Army soldier. And I will be a soldier for life, and that's why I have it on my lapel pin. Uh, and I joke, and this is my time real quick to brag about it, but, you know, there's an Army soldier who's sitting in the back who's a, a judge in Philadelphia, Judge Patrick Dugan, who runs Veterans Court in Philadelphia. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you see me running in the morning, it was Nike started by an Army veteran who actually came back from World War II, served in the 10th Mountain Division, got the Silver Star and four Bronze Stars, and was Phil Knight's track coach. And they started Nike in the back of his van on a waffle iron. Uh, you look at the largest healthcare company in the world, Johnson Johnson, ran right now by CEO Alex Gorski, who is an Army veteran, West Point graduate Army Ranger. So we have a lot, a lot to be proud of. And I know I'm proud to be part of this team. I will always be part of this family. Uh, and whatever you could do to help us do what we can to make this a better Army, a better Department of Defense, a better nation, I'm all about it. God bless you. Thank you so very much. Please remain standing for the benediction delivered by Father Francis Foley, United States Navy, followed by the singing of the Army song led by Staff Sergeant Matt Nall. All those cracks about the Navy, I'm talking to you afterwards. <laughs> it was a great Vince Lombardi who once said that the measure of who we are is what we do with what we have. And this afternoon we gathered to ask the Lord's blessing on Patrick Murphy, who for 20 years has used God's gifts in the service of his country. Let us pray. Eternal Father, in the Christian scriptures, you teach us it is more blessed to give than to receive. And we offer thanks for the generous measure of leadership, sacrifice, and skill which Patrick Murphy has given in times of war and peace. In the United States, in Bosnia, in Iraq, he has cared for the brave men and women who serve our nation. As a soldier, he has defended freedom. As a lawyer, he has upheld the rule of law. And as a leader, he has inspired others to serve with integrity. At the start of this new chapter in his life, bestow a generous measure of courage, wisdom, and strength. Renew his skills, deepen his insight, and increase his endurance. Empower him to build on the great tradition of Army excellence and guide him to lead and care for the committed men and women throughout the Department of the Army. Keep him close to you and close to those he loves. Bless his wife, Jennifer, his daughter, Maggie, his son, Jack. And bless, Lord, all the soldiers and the civilians of the Department of the Army, especially those who are deployed in harm's way. Embrace them and their families in the mantle of your love and protection. May they be instruments of your strength and of your justice. And finally, Lord, inspire all of us who are gathered here to leave this place with a greater commitment to do what is right, to seek what is excellent, and always to serve with honor. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. March along, sing our song with the army of the free. 
Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right and to build the nation's might. And the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won, and the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence loud and strong. For wherever we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Ladies and gentlemen, you are invited to congratulate the Honorable and Mrs. Patrick J. Murphy in the receiving line at the front of the auditorium, and they invite you to join them in the hallway for a reception. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you. <laughs>